very common birds around the swamp, the black and yellow. Um, our cabin is behind the furthest one on the left. Large and stuff in the corner. We're cabin number 18, so the biggest one there is 17, 16, 15, 14. This is common one, name 13. That's the bar? That's the bar and library and boutique. And slowly panning, this is the dining area, this first cabin here. And then I don't know the rest of these cabins. That's an, administ that's an administration building, and then these are all 1 through 10. That's the 1 through 10 residential. This is our friend from Great Britain via Japan. Hi. <laughs> She's and this trying is, to enjoy herself. <laughs> this is the lagoon, which yesterday up until yesterday... Was, was about 12, 14 inches lower. And we saw two caimans out there three nights ago, just their eyes. I've seen a host of mostly egrets here and other birds. So we're going to walk the rest. Okay. Something from Denmark. Joan. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the bar and boutique. And library. And library. This is the area we viewed the welcome video. And from Denmark. This is a library, and we think these are caiman skeletons. That's a kind of cool game right there. We think caiman skeletons. We'll check on that. Now we're headed across to the dining area. Oops. Where some really fabulous meals have been prepared. Professionally trained chef. So today's the first day we ate outdoors. It's lovely. Here on the left. They've round tables here on the left, which is removed. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. This is the common meeting area. It's a beautiful, ubiquitous Ecuadorian flower. We don't know what it's called, but... Heli... Yeah. Heli something. Oh, that's right, a heliotrope thing. Looks like a bird's paradise. And it attracts a lot of insects, but it doesn't have a particular smell. And up here, didn't Carlos see a boa the other night? I think it was a little further to the right, it but is. somewhere close. Okay. I don't really know this area. So this is the hammock area. <laughs> you can relax by the hammocks. And so far we haven't done anything with a fire, but that looks like a fire pit there. And starting over here is the self-guided tour, which is about a 15-minute little walk around the area where you're encouraged to go without a guide in that you're highly discouraged to go anywhere else without a guide because of the potentials of the rainforest. And all these holes are made by ants. You want to get a yeah, lot got of them. them? Yep. Over here. All these big holes are made, made by them. ants. Matt has determined that <clears throat> ant eaters maybe have gone on strike and more need to be hired. I don't know what this fruit is. Is that another fruit? Only 2% of which are edible to humans. 2%? 2% of the many, many fruits in the rainforest. Down here. The administration buildings and the cabins of the staff are that way. So every building, as you might have noticed, is built in the style of the Ashwar tradition. An Ashwar house. They were built by Ashwar people. This again is the dining room and this is the kitchen. That's the kitchen back there. And almost every part of the building is made with 
some palm, some part of the palm tree. Oh yes, this is a manioc plant. This is the, called the yucca tree, which produces a manioc root, which they use for everything, including everything. the ceremony. They make the chicha, chicha with it, which is the staple food. It looks a little bit, not that I'm familiar with the marijuana plant, <laughs> it's reminiscent thereof. There's a pretty, the other pretty bush in the camp. The big yellow flowers. <laughs> Or a floresta amarillo. So every part of this house is built with a part of the palm tree. Some of them are, uh, the wood is from the metal palm and the roof is made with, I think a different palm, but I can't remember the name of it. Ashwa means people of the palm. Can we zoom in on one of the cabin numbers? This is cabin number eight. This is housekeeping. This is where you go to get your boots that it turns out are, wow, really important. It'd be the only way to get through a swamp. Yeah. You'd be leaving any other shoe behind. <laughs> yes, you would, as we experienced yesterday. The more, more cabins, more cabins over here. Cabin, seven, six, five, and all the way down to one. But we are taking the evacuation route. <laughs> Lord finds amusing because I do because where really, evacuate? where are you going? But because it's a hotel, technically, it's got to have an evacuation route. It's not clear why you'd be evacuating or where you'd go to. There'd be no fire in this place. There couldn't be a fire. <laughs> so this is the water filtration. Water filtration cabin. plant right there. Drinking water treatment. Oh, was uh, what's that? I forgot to get the solar panels. And so now we're headed towards the dock. Which is a short walk. Which is pretty key to everything that happens here since most of the transportation occurs on the river. Let's start now. You can see the length of this dock as Lodig was saying. It takes us to the river, which is about a foot higher than it was yesterday. And this is the entry point for the kayaks and canoes and we'll see where Ludwig and I and Deb from Vancouver, no not Vancouver, from Edmonton, Edmonton. went swimming. <clears throat> and yeah, so we're going to be in that time later to tell you what's about the river. The left is the excursion camp. This is the, the preparation stage. Boat hut where they keep kayaks and life jackets. These are the kayaks we've been. Oops, you can't see. as well as the benches and cushions that we sit on when we go in the motorized canoe, life jackets. Generator, it's doing something, I'm not sure what. So these roofs take about two people, about a year and a half to make. And a group of people, maybe eight months. And underneath you can see the thatching but they're interwoven palm leaves and they're very good at keeping rain out. Which Incredible is very necessary. at keeping rain out. It was absolutely pouring this morning and we were mm. dry as a bone underneath it. Can you get the work underneath? <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So you can see the intricate work, which takes a year and a half. It's incredible how tight the, the weaving is and therefore how dry. I guess this one is an older roof. It's got a spot of light up there, but for the most part, they're very well made and take a long time, well constructed. And they keep rain out extremely effectively. I couldn't tell you how. 
But Frank's Roofing Company must have inspected the techniques. Oh, that's how. Layered. They're just like shingles. That's a shing. I mean, this is essentially the shingle on top of the shingle. So this is the dock that was much larger yesterday when we left. It was all the way out to the third stake. Keep the line sign down here. It goes out to... We could walk all the way out to the White Coast two days ago when we arrived, even yesterday. There's the welcome to the power you can last sign. I'll get it from the boat because I'm not going to go in the water right now. So here is the river known as the Kapawari, which is the longer form of Kapawi, which translates as Piranha. So this is the Piranha River, which is, as we said, considerably longer than it was yesterday, or wider than it was yesterday. And we saw dolphins upstream this morning, Lodig and I, for the first time, which was very thrilling. Our guides swam by them, or kayaked by them, and then we went back and tracked them down. And this is the area we went, Lodig and I went swimming in front. The current doesn't look as strong with the extra water, but it's still very strong. You can see it zooming by. And in that are, we are told, tilapia, catfish, the aforementioned piranha, turtles. Caiman. I oh. guess caiman. Electric eels. Eels, right? Close. And of course, pink dolphins. And pink dolphins. And this is the rainforest, the beginning of it, the edge of it. We never heard how many colors for green there are, did we? Mm -mm. There's a lot of birds in there, a lot of insects, and a lot of sounds in the morning. Hey, you got the Danish couple. Here's the. Here's the solar panels. And these panels because it's not always sunny, as you can see, because it is the rainforest. These panels manage to power 60% of the lodge's electricity, and the other 40% is with a generator. Somebody's eating these orange fruits, some animal. We just don't know how or where, but it's right here at the lodge. Ta-da, this is the meeting area. Okay, this is the central meeting area or the gathering place for departure. I'm going to stand on it and pan. This is where we started, the main dock that goes out. You can see a Danish couple, very nice people, Uwe and his wife um, from Copenhagen. What I just went in there to read and hope for some more coffee. That's the tree I just showed you with the fruit back in there. And now these are administration cabins. We saw that earlier. And now we're going to make the trek back to our cabin, which we weren't able to see all the way to the very back of this area. Beyond that one, we'll go up a little hill. And this is the swamp or the lagoon that rose quite a bit as we said in the last day probably rose 12 14 inches it's a little bit drier before we're in the beginning of the rainy season and these are the steps that we walked up and we walk up each day and down and these are the additional cabins that's uh 15 16 17 and then we are at the end 18 my very first morning, still in my mind, is I was a dead rat on these steps. And Bodick um, saw a lizard running down here. And we saw a huge millipede on these steps. It's about 
three inches long, about half an inch thick. And there's our cabin where we've been spending the last week. Or some of the last week. There are boots. We've been visited by a couple mice, but otherwise it's been very, very comfortable. And that's basically it. You can see we're at the end of the forest. And this is our room. A place to hang some wet things. Beds, beautiful beds with those actually act as mosquito nets. And they always make these cute little shapes with the towels. And the whole thing is made with palm in traditional Achuar architectural style. Except we've got screens to keep the bugs out. And they made them with no metal nails. These are all wood nails. Somehow made. And then, of course, <clears throat> the hammock, which has become the clothesline. Because everything's always wet. A mirror. And the bathroom. And occasionally the solar hot water pouches are left there if it's been sunny out. And we can use them in the shower, sort of warmish.